Hello all. In today's session of operating system, we'll be moving on to the next topic, which is related to methods that are required for handling a deadlock. So we have already seen what is a deadlock. We have seen a deadlock and what are the necessary conditions that are required for a deadlock to occur. Having seen this, now we'll move on to this particular topic where we'll see what are the methods that are used for handling a deadlock. We can go for deadlock prevention. We can go for deadlock avoidance, deadlock detection and recovery. And we have another option also where you can just go for ignoring a deadlock. So you pretend as if deadlock has not occurred. So you just go for ignoring. But this is a worst case which we'll be generally using. Now coming to your prevention, coming to the first one, when you go for these methods in deadlock prevention, we see to that we have the necessary conditions. So we see to that this necessary conditions will at least one of the necessary condition will not apply. So if you make one of the necessary condition as false, then we say that there is no deadlock. So you can go for preventing a deadlock. So before it occurs, as we take a normal example, so before you get some disease, you take a medicine. So that is your prevention, right? So when you go for deadlock avoidance, what we do in deadlock avoidance is before you allot why we are actually getting a deadlock here because the process is requesting for a resource. So in deadlock avoidance, what we do is whenever a process request for a particular resource, you check whether it will lead to a deadlock. If it doesn't lead to a deadlock, you allocate this particular resource to the process. Otherwise, we will not allocate. So in uh, avoidance, we need to gather some additional information related to the resources and check whether it is leading to a deadlock or not. In deadlock detection and recovery, since you are not able to overcome the deadlock, even if I'm preventing or trying to avoid it, you will get a deadlock, right? So once you get a deadlock here, you try to detect the deadlock and then take the recovery measure. So here it is. After you get a fever, you take the medicines. Now, coming to the first method of handling a deadlock, we'll go for deadlock prevention. So what happens in deadlock prevention is we'll go through each of this condition in clear. So what is your first necessary conditions? Mutual exclusion. So you don't want this mutual exclusion. So what is normally a mutual exclusion? So when you go for a resource, the resource can be a shareable resource or the resource can be a non-shareable resource. When you go for shareable resource, you don't want a mutual exclusion because by default, any number of process can use the resource at the same time. But when I go for a non-shareable resource, you want a mutual exclusion. Why? Because when one particular processor is using the resource, you don't want the next process to use it at the same time. But when you want this deadlock to be prevented, you don't want mutual exclusion. So I want to make this condition as false. So we'll just take an example here. For example, you have a printer. So when you have a printer and two process wants to use a printer at the same time, is it possible practically, even though if I try to connect it, you get some pages of printer one printed onto the by the printer and some pages of printer two. So whatever output you are getting at last will not be correct. So to avoid this particular problem, basically we go for using a technique known as pooling. It is simultaneous peripheral operation online where what we do is whichever process are requesting all of them will be maintained in a queue and each of these particular uh, job will be given to the printer in FCFS order. Though this pooling technique can be used in some cases, but it is not uh, be used for all the resources. This may be applicable for the printer. For example, if I go for a file. So in that case, I want a one processor to read, the other processor to write at the same time, which is not possible. So making this examples understandable to you. So I want to just tell you that mutual exclusion practically if you want to exclude it. When you want to exclude it with non-shareable resource, it is not at all possible. Whereas in shareable resource, you don't require mutual exclusion. But in non-shareable resource, practically making the mutual exclusion false is not feasible. Now we move on to the next condition. What is your next condition or the necessary condition for a deadlock to occur? Hold and wait. Meaning that one resource process P1 will be holding a resource and it will be waiting for the other resource. So in order to prevent a deadlock, what I want, I want to make this condition false. I don't want any hold and wait. So if you don't want any hold and wait, we have two options. Coming to your first option, 
if p requires some resources r1 r2 and r3 since i don't want hold and wait before you start your operation you acquire all the resources that are required for performing your operation and then once you finish it you release it and the second option is you whenever a particular process is requesting now p has already had r1 and r2 and it wants r3 so in the second approach what we do is whenever it wants a new resource it has to release the resource which is already available and get the new resource so whether you go for this first approach or the second approach the problem is when i go for the first approach what i am doing for performing a particular task since i require three resources i am getting them all all the at a time but see here r3 i want to use it at the last of my operation so till then i'm just concentrating on r1 and r2 so r3 is not being used so till the last you are just acquiring the resource and keep it in it with you so it leads to raw resource utilization or else we'll take a practical example where a process wants to uh, 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 take the data from your dvd drive store it on your disk and print it on your monitor so what it has to do copy the data from dvd to disk and from the disk or your hard disk it has to print it so what are all the resources are required here three resources so in the first approach i'll make i'll get all the three resources at the starting stage only but when am i using my printer after i have done with copying the data from dv to disk then i'm um, work is given to the printer till then the printer is been with your process it is of no use so it leads to low resource utilization and the next approach what is the problem with your next approach for example we go for the second approach well you acquire a dvd and disk at the first stage now you finished your job so in the second stage what you have to do you have to release both of them so you release both of them and try to acquire the disk and printer again so by the time you have released your disk and the printer you want to get a disk and the printer again this might be allotted to some other process so you may get a starvation problem so here also hold and wait making it false is impossible now coming to the next third condition is preemption now you want there is a preemption you have a deadlock so here i want to make this condition as false meaning that you want no preemption so what you are doing here if you have sorry here you have no preemption so when you have a no preemption it is leading to a deadlock no preemption leads to a deadlock make it very clear but here i want preemption so when you are having a preemption it means that there is no deadlock no deadlock now you want a preemption so in what cases you go for uh, preempting it now for example if a process is holding some resources r1 and it is requesting for r2 in that case it has to release the resource immediately which is been held and then go for the new one so it request another resource that cannot be immediately allocated so in this case it has to release all the resources which are held up or you go for the second case where p1 request a resource r1 and p is p1 is requesting for r1 and r2 is with p2 and p2 is in waiting state it is not doing any work in that case what you can do is you can release the resource r1 from p2 and allot it p1 or else if r1 is not allowed to any of the process it is free you can directly allot it so in either of the case you are taking away the resources from some particular process now coming to the third condition here it is circular weight so what happens in your circular weight uh, one as we have seen in circular weight p1 will wait for r1 r1 is with p2 p2 will wait for r2 r2 is with p3 p3 will wait for some r3 which is with p1 so this was a condition for circular weight now here what you want if you want to eliminate this circular weight so that you will not get a deadlock so you don't want no deadlock for no deadlock you need to have no circular weight so in that case what we do is for each of the resource we assign a priority so tape disk scanner and printer you assign some priority after you assign a priority assume p4 is already having a printer so what is the priority of it 4 so now p4 wants a res resource which is nothing but tape but the priority is 1 so in that case you will not allot it in the sense if you are having a higher priority process resource and you are requesting for a lower priority resource you will not be getting it so here in this case 1 2 3 4 indicates your higher one indicates your higher priority 
this indicates your lower priority right so if you are having a lower priority resource and asking for a higher priority resource this cannot be achieved so you need to only go for the next lower priority resource which is available but not to the higher priority so you have to maintain an order so here you can go for requesting any of the resource whose priority is greater than four greater than four so it can be five six seven eight but not below that so these are the four conditions which we have seen that you can go for uh, eliminating in order to not to get a deadlock in this case but when you have seen this practically eliminating mutual exclusion even though we go for using spooling you get a problem why because for all the resources i cannot go for spooling and hold and wait also in practical it is very much uh, impossible because we have starvation problem and you have low resource utilization and in preemption you are just snatching away the resource so whatever work that is being done till that time it is of waste and when you go for your circular weight here this can be achieved by just assigning a priority to each of the resources in numerical order so this is these are the four options that are available for making a deadlock not to occur so you have to make and at least any one of the necessary condition falls so that you will not get a deadlock 